Hey there YouTube, uh, Dwayne back again here, Batman Scale Customs. I'm doing a video here on the Lawman uh, AMT kit. It's uh, actually a pretty nice kit. <clears throat> and what I wanted to do was explain some of the modifications that I've made so far on this build to try and get the car um, as as accurate as the the real car was. I, I know the kit is is reasonably accurate, but there are some modifications that were made to the uh, those Plymouth race cars, the super stock cars in the day that your average everyday street car didn't have. So um, I guess I'll talk first about the uh, the suspension on this car it uh, the the lawman and there were a few other race to super stock racers and I think the color me gone car was another one and uh, there was a few others can't remember off the top of my head who they were but <clears throat> when they received these cars from Chrysler they actually sent them off to the to a third party shop that did some modifications which included uh, moving the rear axle forward a couple inches and moving the front uh, K-member axle center line forward about four or five inches. So if I remember correctly I went with the scale amount of four what would have worked out to be four inches forward which is four millimeters and I basically did that because that's what I had to work with for for space. So um, starting with the rear, they uh, I believe, and I don't know if this is a hundred percent accurate, but I had read somewhere that they actually shortened the rear leaf spring. So with my modifications that's what I did so that would move the the rear axle forward in scale two inches so and what to do that I just cut the two millimeters out of the front of the spring I just cut the end off of it cut back two millimeters glued that back on and we painted it up with uh, the uh, all clad steel that's what I used there then I went in and filled the holes where the pins mount on the rear of the spring and shaved off the mounting pin there but they pretty much sit tight to the uh, frame rail there anyhow so that's where the, the springs go so that was reasonably simple modification there and once mocked up it had a, a bit more real look. If you look really close at any photographs of the, the actual lawman car you'll notice you'll see right away that the, that the front wheels are right up tight against the <coughs> right up here in the wheel well they're very tight to the front edge of that wheel well as a matter of fact I think they even nibbled these out a little bit for clearance so and then the rear you won't it's not as noticeable on the rear because of the, the way the car sits and the design of the the shape of that rear wheel opening you don't really notice it but I did it anyhow because I just wanted to be as accurate as I could be so uh, now moving to the front and I hope I don't forget a lot of the things that I had to do here but with the front we had to move the this whole K member, which is all one unit with all your these suspension steering components, lower control arms and stuff. So I actually took and you know we shaved the the pins off and shifted this whole thing forward as tight up to the front here as I could get it. Uh, and then I had to modify this little piece of the front of the K member that support bracket there to get that fitting properly 
so the bottom side of this wasn't too bad it's where the top side is where it got to be a little trickier um, we had to take and move these upper control arms which um, really don't actually look much like the real thing on the real car but these kind of kind of be hidden in underneath the the inner fenders and stuff so I had decided I wasn't going to worry too much about scratch building up any upper control arms on it there <clears throat> and then uh, the other the, the, the probably most difficult part of the modification uh, was the engine mounts because the engine mounts are molded into the K member so I had to remove them out of there completely and I actually just made my own uh, get a closer look in there at those but I just made my own what I did was just took a piece of styrene and uh, filed it out so that the engine mounts sit down in there quite nicely and they do and then had to mock it up and get those in the right height and the right position front to back so but that that was that would have been the most difficult part and that's probably your most critical part of that operation you you know you don't want to have the engine forward in a, especially in a race car you move the engine forward and you're defeating any traction purposes so uh, if anything they like to set them back in in the real thing so <clears throat> but anyhow in these super stock cars they were in a stock location so then once once your front suspensions all mounted up then that creates a new uh, issue in terms of your your uh, torsion bars so now you've got your transmission cross member and if you move your whole entire front suspension forward your torsion bars end up a little bit too short so what I did was I just took the the kit torsion bars and cut the ends off used a styrene rod and glued the ends back on at, with, at the correct length so these will, these fit quite nicely now so and to the, the styrene rod is is actually a lot more round than kit uh, rods usually anyhow so so we that's had to to make that that modification as well so and looking at it I don't think there's much there's anything else that I had to do in the front if there's anything that I remember that I had to do I'll certainly um, mention that in a, another video down the road so and of course I like to, to put my firewalls in so that I can clean up any any uh, seams get it all smoothed out and that way too when I'm locking it up now the firewall is in the correct location and I don't have to worry about the body being you know forward or rearward although in this kit the body fits the lower the floor pan very nicely and locates really really nicely in this car so fits up nice and tight there it's got no gaps or anything crazy going on in the sides here which is real nice and then as you can see the firewall is, fits good so and mock it's 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 not bad to mock up at all oh yes and then I did one other thing that I did with the front suspension now as I forgot that I did it but I remember now is, is that I have actually shimmed this K member down a little bit to give the car a little bit more uh, in its stance the front end of the car of these cars were up a little bit higher than uh, than the factory cars were. So, and I believe that when they did those modifications, they actually I think they took the car 
to uh, a trailer manufacturer or somebody like that, that, a welding shop that actually did those modifications for them. So, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's that's the suspension, and it's yeah, it's you know it's not bad job to do. It's like I said, I think the engine mounts were probably the the trickiest part of the whole operation there. So. And I'm sure a lot of guys probably uh, probably wouldn't be too interested in, in getting that carried away with with uh, getting the car as correct as as I want to get it. But that's fine too. I, you know, the the kit still builds up and looks like it. it you know, it's decent looking. So now the next modification that I had to make is because what I'm going to be doing is uh, fender well headers is what what these cars had on them so <clears throat> with the fenders what I've done is is these these were solid panels so I've come in here and I've cut these out and you know dressed them up all nice and my headers will now come off the engine upwards and then out through the hole and and down out and exit down into the fender well there so and I haven't started building headers yet because I'd like to get the engine in place first because it and the headers is going to be probably a long process to build those and when I do build them, I'm going to build them, I'm going to be using just some aluminum tubing like this. And just start bending and cutting and praying. Because <laughs> those are going to be tough to build. So, so that's mostly those modifications. Now, as far as the kit itself goes, I did make a modification to the rear axle housing here. Um, I didn't like the look of the the kit rear end. Um, it did not look anything like a real rear end. Period. So what I did was was I actually cut. Well, the rear cover is the main problem here for me, anyhow. So I cut the rear cover off, and then I took a, a cover for a Dana 60 rear end out of the Revell uh, Corvette Gasser, the 62 Gasser kit, and I made myself a resin copy of that and all I did was I just used some clay and uh, just some modeling clay there's a blob of it there and just you know took the the kit cover out of the Corvette pressed it in there all nice got it shaped the way I want it and then just poured some uh, I just use this. This this is fiberglass resin. Just use it without the fiberglass. So, and that that worked actually quite nicely for me. It dries fairly quickly, and I just happen to have that kicking around here. So I didn't even have to go to the store to buy anything, which is nice. <clears throat> so that yeah. There's that that modification springs. Um, as as you can tell, I've cut the doors out and the trunk. Um, the only reason that I mean this is one of these things that you know everything escalates as you go because the battery in these cars was located in the trunk. So of course I'm going to locate the battery in the trunk, and if, to do that I might as well cut the trunk open. And then if you're cutting the trunk open I guess you might as well cut the doors open as well it's so that's really the that's the thought process that went in there so um, yeah and then once I get this once I get the jams built for the for the body here then I'll I'll get into doing a uh, the paint job on this car and I'm gonna film the whole thing so I'll start out with the white, and I'm going to use enamels on it. Um, I got a few points to prove on enamels on on there. So, and I have I have the the colors here anyhow. So, 
the uh, LB white body with the red the candy red over gold um, stripes on it so and then also I have not yet um, cut the holes in the hood there's gonna be two holes gonna be cut in the hood for the the carburetors and the stacks that go with it so once I get the the uh, the engine installed into the lower pan then I'll be able to go ahead and properly cut the holes in the hood here and again I'll do a, a video on that as well while I'm doing it I'll film it as I go so I know that's 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 not an easy task but it's uh, it can be done and it can be done without too much frustration anyhow so so we got that to look forward to and what else I've got the wheels done on it I've tr I've decided to go with the uh, torque thrusts on it I just like the look of them so painted those up got the centers painted up in them I didn't de-chrome these or anything I used the kit chrome here this kit chrome on this is fairly nice so those are the wheels and uh, I had you know what I had the engine somewhere around here and now I I can't remember what I did with it no big deal there I just basically it's just assembled and it's painted in its um, Chrysler orange and I still have yet to paint the transmission on it and once I do then we're into assembly and I did want to mention that the well the one thing I did want to mention about this car is that in 64 there were two versions of this car there was a the 426 max wedge which is what this kit comes with and then later on uh, Dodge or Plymouth supplied the, the super stock racers with the uh, the 426 Hemi cars and those cars were a little different in the sense that those they had uh, automatic transmissions they only had uh, two headlights as where this car come, has the four headlight system in them uh, the one of them I think the no, I can't remember I have to have to uh, <clears throat> verify this with Chris from 45 productions who's working on this car as well and both him and I kind of been pooling our our uh, research and and he has some resources as well that that he can get information from so but in it anyhow as I was saying the rear seat one of one of the versions of this car had the back seat in it and one of them didn't and I, and I now can't remember which was which I think that the the max wedge car had the rear seat in it and the Hemi car did not and then the the hood scoops as well the max wedge car used the hood scoop with the two intakes or the you know the the depression down the center of it and the 426 hammy car used the the wider just the flat hood scoop so I'll be going with the the wedge scoop here cuz I'm building the the wedge version of this car I was gonna try and do the 426 Hemi version but there was just there too much that I would have had to change so I stick with the the max wedge which was actually a you know that was a heck of a race car any on its own anyway so and um, I think that's probably it for this video I'm sure that there's more information that I can pass on here when it comes to this car and uh, more than happy to do it uh, some guys you may, might not care about all the little fine details that's cool too so but anyhow the video is getting on here so I think I'll I'll stop there and we'll pick up you know doing doing some when I get start getting more progress on it I'll film it and we'll 
we'll get those videos up. Hopefully those will be shorter, but uh, it, unlikely. So anyways, <laughs> well, uh, uh, you guys take care for now, and we'll see you in the next video.